All right, good afternoon and welcome. This webinar is part of ACTE's Taking Business to School series, which identifies successful business and industry partnerships with education institutions and is generously sponsored by Zello. Today's webinar will feature the Wichita State University Campus of Applied Sciences and, Technolo and Technology and Snap-on. Together, they have collaborated to implement a high quality, innovative aviation training program called the National Center for Aviation Training. Now I'm gonna uh, share my screen to show just a few slides here. First, I wanna tell you a little bit more about the series, which focuses on the relationship between CTE uh, and employers as it relates to skills development and is also connected to the business and community, sorry, partnership. I wanna go back here. I'm sorry about this. And is also connected to the student career development element within ACTE's uh, high quality CTE program of study. This series includes five publications, two of which were recently published uh, in, in the last few months, five webinars, which complements the publication briefs. There will be three virtual industry tours, which will uh, begin after the new year. And then also the Taking Business to School tool Toolkit is a resource that is also in development and to also watch for that next year. I wanna take a moment just to share some of our information on our upcoming webinars. The next one will be on January 12th at 2.30. It'll be part of our engaging high quality uh, instruction series, and it'll talk about academic integration as a necessary component to CTE programs. And then you can just learn more and register for these free webinars on our webinar webpage. We are always updating it. And as you can see, we've got four upcoming webinars after the start of the new year. So without further ado, let me introduce our moderator who is Dana Patterson. She is the ACTE Workbase Learning Section Awards Chairperson and the Workbase Learning Coordinator for the Itawamba Career and Technical Center in Fulton, Mississippi. She has also served as an active Skills USA advisor and is a grant writer for the ICTC. Please give Dana a warm welcome and I'll turn it over to you now. Good afternoon, everyone. We are so excited you have decided to um, join us today. And um, I'm excited to announce um, our panelists today. Um, first, we have Mr. Barrett Crane. Barrett is currently responsible for all education programs for Snap-on in North America, from educational facilities management, curriculum support to student purchase programs. Barrett's career began as an automotive business owner and technical trainer prior to going to work for Snap-on Incorporated, which has been his employer for 27 years. His many roles have included diagnostic products promotion, franchisee business manager, branch manager, and regional manager. Since 2008, he has worked within Snap-on's industrial division where he is currently the national sales manager. Barrett holds a BA in business management and marketing from Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He also serves on the Tech Force Board of Directors and supports Skills USA. All right, thank you, Mr. Barrett, for joining us today. Um, next, we're going to um, introduce Ms. Sh um, Sherry Utash. Sherry Utash has served as president of Wichita State University Campus of Applied Sciences and Technology, WSU Tech, since 2015. Prior to that, she served eight years at Wichita Area Technical College as vice president of academic affairs with over 9,000 students. WSU Tech is the largest technical college in Kansas and acts as managing partner for the National Center for Aviation Training. UTASH offers a unique blend of teaching, administrative, and leadership experience in both higher education and private industry. Additionally, UTASH managed and facilitated the affiliation of WATC with Wichita State University to create WSU Tech. All right, and now we're going to introduce Mr. Scott Lucas. And Dr. Scott Lucas is in his sixth year as the Vice President of Aviation Manufacturing and Institutional Effectiveness at WSU Tech. 
He's been with the college since 2003 and has served in multiple capacities in student services, academics, institutional research, and planning. Dr. Lucas serves on numerous local, regional, and national boards focused on the community, workforce, and education. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us today, and we are excited that you have taken time out of your um, holiday schedule and um, to come to us or come with come and bring this to um, everyone today. And a special thanks to Zello for sponsoring this um, event today. So let's get to it. Um, all right, um, Ms. Utash, um, how did Snap-on and WSU Tech collaborate successfully to develop the partnership? So first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Looking forward to being part of this panel and um, wishing everybody the happiest of holidays. Uh, our, our, our relationship with Snap-on started uh, about 14, 15 years ago. And uh, actually a, a, a gentleman named Frederick Brookhouse that was part of Snap-on at that time and he is now retired. He came to us uh, along with Roger Tedioski, who is the executive director of uh, NC3. And we were getting ready to build this new building called the National Center for Aviation Training. And they showed a great interest. I mean, it was dirt on the ground. We hadn't even shoveled a scoop of dirt yet when they got here, but uh, um, they came and they um, talked to us about partnering with them. Uh, and what would that look like? Because they were wanting to get more involved in the, edu in the educational part of aviation. And certainly um, we were building the National Center for Aviation Training at the time. So um, that's really how it started. I mean, the thing that I've always appreciated about the story is that Snap-on had a vision uh, greater than the vision that we had for ourselves, frankly. And they have never stopped having that vision and being a partner side by side with us in everything that we've done over the last 15 years. Very good. That Shay. is fantastic. When, um, Barrett, do you want to add? Yeah, that? I can add to that. You know, okay. uh, one of the things that's great in, in, in terms of looking at this from the industry is, you know, the the format that Snap-on follows to engage with industry is really to observe work and identify those opportunities to improve the work process, improve safety, improve the efficiency of the worker uh, through making that work easier and through the use of those tools. And we've taken that same approach to our partnerships with education and identifying those areas and trying to you know, really understand how the education process can implement some of these things that we learned from industry. And so it's really a very uh, uh, beneficial uh, relationship that we have with education because it forces us to think differently than we do when we're working with uh, industry partners. A lot of times it's just, uh, you know, going in and, and uh, figuring out how to make a widget just a little bit more efficient. But when you think about the education process and how you teach that, it does bring another level of understanding in terms of what industries need because we take that knowledge that we learned from Sherry's team at uh, WSU and we move that knowledge back to industry. And it's a very heavily collaborated uh, process to go you know, the back and forth like that. So I guess it's, it's not just uh, in support of education, but I think industry really gets uh, a lot out of this process as well, because we get better in, in the way that we engage our industry partners as well. It's a very, uh, it's a very collaborative symbiotic relationship because it helps us focus back to industry, which is you know, a major focus that we have. Um, through, um, through, through, through the products and the tools and the resources that Snap-on provides along with um, the education. So it's, it, it has been a, just an, an absolutely um, transformative uh, project for us working with Snap-on as a partner for the last 15 years. Guys, this is fantastic. And it's a sounds like an amazing opportunity for your students and your community. So I'm excited to hear more about it. Um, um, Barrett, how does the program assist students with career growth and networking opportunities to help them secure employment? Could you describe the roles that Snap-on and WSU contribute related to this priority? You know, when you think about what the certifications represent, they're really developed and intended to support those core competencies uh, in a multitude of industries, you know, so they're not just designed up. Some of them are more heavily weighted towards uh, aviation and manufacturing, but in general, 
they're designed to support those core competencies. So, you know, when you think about mo what most employers do, they understand that they've got to take a, a new employee and they've got to train them on the specifics of their role, of that job that they're, they're hiring for. But they do that uh, based upon the understanding that that employee comes to them with a set of core capabilities, core competencies. And that's what our uh, certification programs are really designed to do is to reinforce those core competencies. When you think about programs like torque measurement and precision measurement, learning how to use all the different precision tools that are out there, you know, a lot of times I hear, well, you know, we can, you know, you can buy a, a tape measure or a caliper or, or you know, a multitude of uh, different measurement tools from other companies, but why do we need to use a certain type of uh, measurement tool? And a lot of times what I tell uh, educators and industry people is, you know, it's not just having the tool and taking the measurement. What they learn in, in school is how to properly take that measurement, the, the techniques that are used to properly get, gain that. Because if you think about it, you had three or four people taking the same measurement, and if they get three or four different results, then it's really a useful, useless uh, endeavor there. So a lot of what they learn is, uh, is how to do certain things, not just how to read the, the, the uh, information on the tool. So, you know, these, uh, these really, and beyond that, provide a way for that student to demonstrate their capabilities and their competencies to do that job. I mean, if you're going to pursue a, a manufacturing role and you're able to talk through the different measurement tools that you're able to, you know, that you've mastered, that you have high levels of competency on, well, now that employer understands that, you know, they understand that you went to WSU. They also understand that you took uh, additional training to master these areas of uh, competency. And so that means something to that employer. And you think about it, um, it's a competitive world out there. And if I can uh, bring to the table those additional competencies and I can demonstrate that I know how to do certain things, when you think about where a student that is graduating is going after that first job, a lot of times what they struggle with is that competitiveness and, and being able to articulate what they know how to do because they haven't really been in the role yet. So uh, that's a that's a difficult scenario. So what these certifications do along with, the, with their diplomas and other certificates that they earn through WSU is their ability to communicate their level of competency to take on that role and take on that job. And so you think about the um, uh, uh, leadership that Dr. Utash has uh, uh, provided it's been instrumental in the development of these these certifications. I know part of uh, what you've asked there is, you know, how do we um, uh, describe these as, uh, uh, to, you know, these these being a priority. You know, when you think about the certification uh, on electrical termination, that was developed with the support of WSU, and you know, it it's not only the technology. And I was kind of lead, uh, leading towards this earlier, but it's not only the technology, um, but it's it's actually how to transfer that knowledge, right? And so, you know, I can tell you how something works and I can describe it, but I may not be able to do it in a way that is beneficial to the student. And I think that's where this partnership with education becomes so powerful is that there's a knowledge in how to transfer that information through the, you know, through the creation of hands-on lab exercises and understanding how people learn and some folks need to get their hands on certain things and, and act, actually do it. Um, and then there's other things like training aids that are developed because that drives home that muscle memory. And when you think about taking that measurement that we talked about earlier, when I practice that and I've got my hands on it, that muscle memory is developed. And now I truly have the ability to do certain things. I don't just understand it and know it, I can actually perform that task and do it at a professional level. And I think when you, when you talk to an employer, that's really what they're looking for is when they bring somebody in, first of all, they know they're going to be safe in the work environment and that they, they have a certain baseline of understanding and competency and, uh, and the consistency and being able to know if I hire this person that graduated from WSU and they have these certifications, well, then I know I can deploy them in my company in certain places and I'm going to get a you know, consistent uh, employee out of that. So that's, that's kind of my take on it. I don't know if uh, that answered your question, but uh, my long-winded way of uh, describing that. That was a fantastic response. I really, really like how you guys are taking um, 
are empowering students, you're out allowing them to th have that opportunity. So once they finish these programs or as they're going through these programs, they, they have a toolkit, they can pack it up and they are able to take that portfolio and show how fantastic they are in these skills. They, they're, that's just a great response. I really enjoyed that. All right, um, Scott, I'm gonna let you take this question. All right, how has your education and employer partnership worked to support educators? How does this program assist with educators being out of the classroom for training programs? And do Snap-on employees support teachers in the classroom through mentoring or in other ways? Thanks, Dean, I, I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for, for joining us today. Um, you know, really just to kind of piggyback on, on what Barrett said, when we, when we set priorities and we're really looking at it through the lens of, of what our employers want and need, the, the proper safe usage of tools is a number one foundational skill. And so when we can provide that from ultimately the best known partners in those realms, whether that's Snap-on or Starrett or Daniels or whomever that might be, that really echoes with our employers. And so when um, the, the middle person there is our faculty. So when we look at where that educational partnership really lies, it's the training that our faculty receive that in order allow them to provide that training back to the students. And the curriculum that's been built and the, the equipment and um, the, the, the things that Barrett had mentioned those are extremely important for faculty. And, I, and I've got a great example. So we, within torque training, um, we have certain elements of our faculty that every time we say, hey, it's time, you need to go to, to torque certification training for faculty. And they're like, well, I, you know, I, I know everything about the torques, you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I don't need to do it. And we're like, you need to go because you'll learn something. And they're like, nah, I, I pretty much know how to use everything. And within the first six hours of that training, their eyes are wide open and they're like, you know, I didn't know that. And I didn't know that was the proper way to do this. And it was the proper usage of, of how, to, how to measure the, the torque rating on, on a specific um, wrench. So, you know, the feedback that we continually get from faculty on that side of it, and then you couple that when, when they translate that to students, um, from the products that they're using um, safely and also being able to um, utilize what we know industry is really pushing for on the precision measuring side. And, and so when you look at the training programs that we offer, it all reverberates through our program. So whether that's mechanics or whether that's manufacturing or whether that's aerospace, all of those fundamental foundational skills all lie within there. And so that's really all we're, we're, we're providing is, is it's, it's nothing that's extremely new. We're just providing what we know industry wants, which is proper usage of those tools um, and that equipment. And so when we partner with Snap-on and we provide these certification opportunities, we're validating that our students walk out of here knowing that they can properly utilize the foundational equipment and skills that industry is looking for. So we add that on top of what we already know are the, the knowledge and skills that they're provided within whatever their chosen program is. Um, and it's just an added benefit to our students that, that just continues to grow as we continue to add certifications. We're continuing to add certifications even now in areas and, and, and looking at what every time we develop a new program, we, we look at what are those certifications that we need to add in there? We work with industry, we, we talk with partners like Snap-on, um, as well as our local industry partners to identify what, what are those important pieces. I would just add to that, that uh, from, from professional development for your faculty, the, 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 the training that they get by attending the Snap-on train the trainers is second to none. And it, 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 is, it, it reinforces to them the relevancy and the authenticity of what's happening in industry. Um, and so it's, it's professional development that you can't find in any other way for career tech ed faculty in, in my estimation. Then on the other side, the students, they still get their degrees and their certifications from, from, from WSU Tech, but think of the the, the value added benefits they have when they go to that world of work 
uh, and they have certifications from industry, snap on, whether it's piano torque or meter or, or, uh, or tire changing or precision, whatever the case may be, they've got that added benefit. So if you think about it, it is a perfect model for professional development for students and for faculty. Yeah, that's the, those are um, really, you touched on a lot of good things there, Sherry, because if you think about where we, where do we find technical educators? They come from industry, right? So the fact that they left their industry role and became an instructor uh, as, as technology evolves, as processes change in the industry, that instructor is now in a place where he's not exposed to that as often and, and as much. So what this program does is it brings that industry training element right back to that instructor so that that instructor is able to stay current. And as, they, as long as they continue to pursue this, they, they uh, uh, maintain that level of uh, currency with that uh, industry. The other thing is what I see is these instructors becoming just fantastic, not just a, just meeting the bar, but actually becoming phenomenal instructors, because just think about it. When you have to perform at a level that you're teaching your peers, these master instructors are at the top of their game. And so what I see happening on, on these uh, during these train the trainer events is these newer instructors that are coming in. And they're literally learning a lot about how to manage a classroom, not only the technology that they're learning about, but they're also learning good, solid, fundamental instruction practices from these master instructors that are there. And Sherry, you've got several on your staff that have become master instructors, but, you know, they always say that if you want to learn something, go teach it. And when you think about what a master instructor has to do, I mean, that's a very uh, stressful environment, I can imagine, being in front of other instructors and you're teaching them. So you really have to be on your game. So if I was going to your school, Sherry, I'd want to be in uh, one of those classes that has a master instructor in it because I know I'm going to get the best education from uh, attending that class. But uh, that's really, I think, the, in, in a nutshell, what makes this program so much different than other programs because of that level of instructor training. We start there and we make sure that instructor understands everything there is to know before we start talking about how to address students and student learning and all those other things. If we don't address that instructor's development, then we, you really can't carry that through to the, the student and, and value to the uh, employer. I agree. Um, <clears throat> you guys have really um, set up a almost a model for, I would say, CTE instruction, not just for this industry, but for any industry in um, career and technical education. This is just a great way to um, provide sound practice for your educators, as well as, um, you know, creating opportunities for your students. So um, I, I'm super impressed by this um, format. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the next question. Um, Sheree, how has the program incorporated other aviation partners and leaders? How can partners collaborate together, bringing in more support and partners to fill in gaps needed by a variety of industry leaders to benefit students? Okay. Well, I would say that, you know, one of the things that has um, really been advantageous uh, is that we have created, because of our work in this space and the support that we have from Snap-on, We've been able to create networks with other colleges across the United States that have aviation programs. So we have a sharing of knowledge. We have a sharing of uh, implementing uh, and developing certifications uh, that meet industry needs. And so that, you know, that network has been very, very important to us. We have a great network, uh, you know, for example, with Pima Community College, uh, Dr. Lee Lambert's um, institution where we benchmark with them on a lot of things and we work with them collaboratively. So that's, that's, a, that's a very rich um, uh, network for, from an educational standpoint. If you think about industry partners, certainly in the world of aviation, um, there are some big industry partners uh, that we all connect to. That's Boeing, Spirit Aerosystems, Textron Aviation, Airbus, all of this has allowed us to partner with those industries uh, in maybe unique ways that we weren't already partnering with them. Uh, and it also makes sure that we are uh, 
working with their HR departments and with their, um, their, their direct level supervision on uh, touch labor uh, with, with the kind of certifications, the kind of information that students come out with. So I, you know, the, the thing that I think is probably, you know, there's that networking opportunity. The other thing I just wanted to say is, you know, for faculty that go through the train the trainer, there becomes a networking opportunity for them too, because then they're networking with people that are teaching the same things that they're teaching across the United States. So they've got, you know, that network of, of professionals that they can reach out to or, or collaborate with or, you know, console with, whatever the case may be, um, whatever is needed in that. But I think that I think those networking across institutions, across faculty, and certainly engagement with industry, because you think about every industry, whether it's aviation, automotive, um, you know, anything that's building anything, uses Snap-on tools. You know, uh, you know, as as Nick Pinchuk always says, you know, we're a, we're a nation of builders and people that make things. And Snap-on Tools is, is an integral piece of all of those um, different industries. So it, it helps you bridge with one single um, vendor. It helps you bridge a lot of different um, industries and a lot of different industry partners. So from that, you know, I think that's, that's probably a huge benefit for us. And the other thing it does is it drives us to be you know, we're, you know, education is probably no different than most industries. We're a little competitive. Uh, and so there's part of this that drives that, you know, that, 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 that friendly competition and that desire to be excellent and that desire to have the highest quality and to have your, have your faculty be recognized as master teachers within this system. So those are all things that I think um, provide um, relevancy uh, authenticity to what we're doing and give us the ability to provide to industry um, a product, which is our students um, that are um, ready to meet the world of work and the future world of work. So I, 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 I would, really, I, sorry, ahead, Dana, I, I, I just, Listen, thank you. yeah, I, I'd add to that, that, you know, when you boil it all down, it's really the, the collaboration between what we've done at WSU Tech and Snap-on, which is, you know, that is kind of the first building block. And we go back, so when we, when we first started this and implemented it, you know, we, we stuck to the core of, of um, hand tools, um, precision measuring, torque, and then Snap-on approached us, frankly, and said, you know, we want to help you expand this to the aviation industry. You know, we're at the National Center for Aviation Training. We want to expand it specifically to aviation. So we worked collaboratively to develop certifications um, with other industry partners in precision electrical termination, in sheet metal, uh, sheet metal repair. So, you know, those are things that without this collaboration, without this partnership, we would have never really had that opportunity to do on our own. It was a vision that we had at one point in time because we we're always like, hey, you know what would be the next coolest certification? But it was really that collaboration and the push. And, and like Sherry said, that snap on thinking of a little bit more visionary than we were at the time of we can make this happen. We just need your help doing it. And it, and it is that symbiotic relationship that we've had with Snap-on um, that has allowed us to do that. And now if you look at it um, and you take like the, the sheet metal certification and the value that it adds to anyone that's working in the aviation industry and you take precision electrical termination. And frankly, uh, when we show that to aviation companies, they get jazzed. And so when you look at what, what it's really doing to the industry, um, it's moved us education into a, into a unique partnership where we're providing, again, the, that solid core foundational skills that our students now walk away with and, and have the certifications to prove that they can do that. And it, and it wouldn't have been possible without truly that collaboration we have with snap -on. Well, that is fantastic, guys. There, um, I'm seeing that with this partnership, you're creating um, more of a, I would say, precedence for career and technical education through this partnership. You guys are setting the bar very, very high. Um, 
So we're going to finish up the last question. How can other industry leaders who view a gap in recruitment and enrollment replicate what you have done related to their own industry needs? What is a roadmap for schools and industry leaders to form similar partnerships? So I'm going to let all of you guys respond to that. Um, Barrett, if you'd like to start, that'd be great. One of the things that, you know, from the education side, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a, a one-stop shop uh, for um, uh, uh, partnerships with industry and in, in education. I would say this both to an industry partner that wanted to connect with, it, with education. And if anybody from education wants to connect with industry, reach out to NC3. I mean, when you think about it, you've got Snap-on, you've got Train, Festo, Lincoln Electric, 3M, Greenlee, Palmer Hamilton, Dremel, there's just a multitude of companies that are there that are, you know, wired to support education. I mean, you can reach out to industry, but like we were talking about earlier, I mean, it, there's a general understanding that you need to have uh, uh, skills development that support the jobs and the roles that you're trying to, to fill. But sometimes there's a, a, a lack or a gap in understanding and how to do that. And that's really where that partnership with NC3 has helped industry to figure out how, how does this fit and what do you need to do as a corporate partner and setting those expectations for industry, but at the same time, getting that open dialogue between education and industry going and, and maintaining that and keeping it going. It's not just a single conversation that takes place you know, one time a year. It's just constant. It's, going, it, it, it's ongoing. And so if I'm a school, I'm, I'm reaching out to NC3 because I know I can really maximize my uh, uh, level of engagement just through that one connection. And if again, the same thing, if I'm industry and I want to figure out how to, how do I get involved? That's the same, same scenario. So it's a great clearinghouse for those types of relationships. And then, then finally, you know, I, I hear all the time from uh, schools that say, well, you know, we just don't have this multi-million dollar budget to go revitalize our whole automotive department or manufacturing facility. And, and, and a lot of times, uh, you don't really need to do that. I mean, there's there's times, I guess, if you don't have the facilities to support the level of enrollment that you're seeing happen, but that's a different problem. I think a lot of times what happens over time is things start to become uh, old, out of tune with, uh, with the industry. And so if you're trying to attract people to your program and they're walking into your facilities and they see something that's a bit outdated, it kind of feeds into that trades type of, of uh, environment and if you're a parent and you're saying, hey, I don't want my son or daughter to be in a, a, in a job like that or a career like that, well, education has the, the perfect opportunity to really change the vantage point, change the view by just doing certain things to, to up, upgrade that facility. So things like decluttering the, the labs and getting the facilities uh, painted in bright colors and getting new lighting and all those things that, yeah, they cost money, but they're not you know, hundreds of millions of dollars like it would cost to build a new facility. So there's a lot of things that can be done that, to turn things around and make it a more exciting environment to be in. And, uh, and again, that, that's the starting point that allows your program to start to reach out to those uh, incoming students and to the local uh, employers. I mean, em local employers are going to be just as important to get them on board. And when they see a facility that is in tune with where they're at today, uh, or you may be leading the way, you may be helping those local employers uh, develop their uh, facilities to match what you're doing because you're, you're, you're kind of stepping out in front of that. So again, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but I think uh, just, just looking at what you have the ability to do, what you have the funding and finances to do, uh, but there is always an opportunity to improve. And I think that, uh, that uh, you know should be investigated without those huge uh, uh, budgets that a lot of folks have a, have a hard time getting, right? I, I would I would add to that, you know, it, and it's really it's the it's the networking opportunity and that collaboration that's really given us the the vehicle to make that happen. Um, with with regards to how industry leaders and, and recruitment and and, and enrollment. Um, we, we've been able to leverage that again, because of the value those certifications play for industry to really reinforce that for students. As we walk through that with high school counselors, as we talk about what kind of certifications 
with parents as we talk about the safety and, and ultimately what your students walk away with. As Sherry said, you know, students are going to get a degree or a certificate from us, but we, we always emphasize it's that next step of how are we connecting those students to industry? That's really the important part. And, you know, going back to it, and it's kind of a broken record, it's the collaboration with Snap-on that's really, and, and those, those partners that have made that happen. Um, and I, I'll give you a couple examples. So um, I was on a, a, invited to a panel discussion. I wasn't on the panel. I was just invited to the discussion with some of Barrett's team last year at a virtual conference. We all attended virtual conferences last year. And um, it, was, it was a topic that I kind of walked into it saying, you know, I probably, probably won't get a lot out of this. It's, you know, it's my fifth year doing this at the time. And, and um, we had been working with Snap-on pretty regularly. And, and I walked out of that meeting and I had like four brand new ideas that had all been just surged through that one meeting. And it was a collaboration with other colleges with Snap-on um, and, and some industry members. And so frankly, we've, we've come home and we've put those in place and we're working through those. And another example, um, another industry partner through this same network, um, Lincoln Electric, we did, a, we did a, a conference session at ACTE Best Practices this year in Austin. And the focus was on, on the, our, we, we have, we've been fortunate enough to put in a, a virtual welding lab. And to Barrett's point, not, not all the colleges necessarily have the funds to build it, build a full virtual welding lab. We, we saw some value in it and we, we really wanted to invest in it. But when we, when we talked at that conference session, and I emphasize this throughout, it's not, it's not, it has absolutely nothing to do with virtual welding, our, our session, even though that was kind of the piece. The, the core of it is, is the curriculum that was created by by this vendor partner that reverberates through our industry partners, but really what it has given our students was, was such a solid path and such a good curriculum. Um, that was really the messaging. So when we look at recruiting and enrollment and supporting students and building that pathway out, that's what we've done. So we've implemented that across all of our welding programs. We've put it in various high schools and that curriculum um, has, has honestly it's recruited students on its own because it's, it's such a, our industry partners now are hiring, they're calling us to scholarship students, to hire students direct, to put them in applied learning opportunities because they understand how quality of what quality of student that we're actually sending out there right now. That's something that we haven't been able to say every year in every program. And so to be able to say that because of the vendor partnerships that we've developed and, and really um, through this network and through that collaboration, it just wouldn't have been possible. So, you know, across the nation, everybody that's, that's working in career technical education, we've been working so hard to improve the image of career technical education. that It's not your father's or your grandfather's VOTAC anymore. It is career technical education. It is STEM based. And it is, it, 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 it is you know, people have to have um, a certain knowledge and, and, and a aptitude in order to do this work. So part of what I think, you know, uh, it, it, we, have a, we have a great privilege and a responsibility as two year, colleges engaged in career technical education because there's been you know there's always been a time in in this world uh across the nation that we have needed um a workforce but no no greater time than right now in every single area of career technical education so if you think about this partnership that we're talking about with snap on uh, and how it's elevated our college and our faculty and our students, everybody has that opportunity to engage in that across the nation. And I'm gonna take a shameless plug because I'm the board chairwoman of NC3. And I wanna reiterate what Barrett said, NC3 is a gateway to begin. Had we not found Snap-on and NC3, we as a college would not be where we're at today. 
the last 15 years would have not happened. Not like they are. And I'm, I, I can, I can be very, very confident in saying it would, we would never have achieved the things that we have achieved because they've been such an important part of that. The other piece of it, so, I mean, reach out to NC3, um, get involved with them because Snap-on started that, but it's, it's now into so many different industries and it's so incredibly important. So automotive, um, heating and air, uh, climate and energy, uh, um, aviation, uh, refrigeration. There's just a plethora of industries that are, are, are built into NC3. And that's so, it's just such an important part to build the workforce of the future, which is again, our responsibility and a privilege. The other thing I would say is it's super important if you're thinking about doing any of this, that you have the leadership of your institution engaged and, um, a, a, a big cheerleader for this. So Scott, as, as a VP in, in the area that we have here at the college, you know, he and I are completely committed to doing this work. And we are, you know, we, we fully understand that that takes some resources and it's not as resource heavy as one might think. The other thing I would say is find the champions in your fa faculty, find a champion or two, just find one or two that might champion this idea. And, and, and championing your faculty is just like, you know, engaging students. Students, by word of mouth, vote with their feet and they come to your institution and they enroll. Faculty are the same way. If they see a faculty being very successful in this, they're gonna to wanna to engage and it just kind of multiplies. So you have to have engagement at the, at the top leadership level of your institution. And there's lots of things you can choose to do. And it can seem like an elephant on a table. So don't do that. Pick one thing, pick one that you wanna do and then find your, find your champion and then be successful with that. And then pick another one and another one and just start growing your industry credentials and your industry partnerships with all of these um, fabulous partners that are part of the NC3 network for the value, because the value at the end of the day is to your students because they have value added benefit to go to the world of work. And your faculty are more professionally developed by this network than any other network I can think of. Wow, that is truly an amazing um, setup and design you guys have created for your students, for your community, for your faculty, for your industry, um, and for your, um, your college. It's just fantastic situation. I really um, found a lot of value in this um, today. And especially for me, I'm at the high school level, and I know that there's probably several on that are at the high school level, and we can take tons of the tons of these ideas that you guys have shared with us today and use it at the high school level as well. This is a great program. Um, I have to say, um, ACTE has, um, you know, recently, the last few years, released um, the um, high quality framework, and you guys are meeting every one of those. You truly are, and it's impressive. Um, also, um, there is an article that was recently published. This is sponsored by Zello, and um, they have recently published an article about, about you guys, and it is on the ACT website. Um, Julia, in a few minutes, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, and she'll be able to tell you where you can find those things. Um, do you guys have any closing remarks, um, anything that you would like to add um, to our presentation today. Well, I want to go back to your high school piece because if you will work with your local to your college, particularly if they're part of this NC3 network, um, we, we deliver a lot of these certifications to our high school students as part of our high school program. So it's extremely important because again, um, you can work with your partners to be able to do that. Or if you're a high school if you're, if you're a high school and you don't have a, a two-year uh, community technical college partner, you can actually come into the NC3 network um, yourselves as well. But again, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be able to do this. It's always fun to talk about. It has been an incredible journey for this college. And um, I, 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 can, I, I can never thank Snap-on enough uh, for all that they've done to walk side by side with us through this journey. 
and they continue to walk side by side with us uh, as we develop new certifications, as we um, renovate space. You know, I'll go back to the fact it doesn't cost a lot of money to put some paint on the walls and some new lights. And boy, I'll tell you, that can make all the difference in the world. And to get rid of junk, uh, put a dumpster out and just clean some things out. We've done that too. Uh, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to be part of this work. Uh, and it's a pleasure to represent both um, NC3 and WSU Tech today. Thank you, Sherry. And then you, you've been a great, uh, your organization and your leadership has just been fantastic. And we uh, can't uh, say enough on the snap-on uh, side of things as, as how valuable that relationship is to, uh, to our programs and to what we've learned from, from you and your staff is just uh, incredible. And so thank you for that. And thanks for everyone uh, for allowing me to participate today. This, is, this has been very good. I, I really do appreciate the collaboration here. I think the only thing I would add is, you know, it, it's just, it's amazing what you can do when you have an industry partner that shares the same mission and vision that you do. Um, how are you ultimately, you know, you, you can move worlds when, we, when you have that together. Um, and we started really small and we've, we've grown it and grown it. And so it's, it's definitely doable no matter where you're at, no matter uh, what, what your mission is, if you're in automotive or manufacturing or aviation, th there's some aspect of it that, that is definitely relatable. So hopefully a little bit of what we shared today, you'll be able to walk away with and plant that seed and, and keep moving things forward. Well, once again, I want to thank you guys. And um, Dr. Lucas, I have to say that um, you guys have definitely planted some seeds in um, by sharing this information with all of our um, viewers. And um, we hope to be able to take this to the next level for all of these, for all the programs involved. And um, once again, we thank you. And thank you to Zello for sponsoring this opportunity. And I'm going to turn it over to Julia. Great. Well, thank you to all of our presenters today for your collective insights on this multifaceted approach to creating this model business education partnership. It truly is just uh, fantastic. Um, and thank you all for attending today. Just a reminder that the webinar will be available to view on demand just after January 3rd on both the ACT webinar and taking business to school web pages which I've also noted in the chat. And you'll see that Steve has also noted where you can find information on ACTE's high quality framework. It's uh, really just a incredibly valuable resource. I highly recommend that you check it out. And uh, we'll also be sure to promote the availability of this on-demand webinar on our communications channels and on social, including social media. So thank you again for your participation today. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.